All right, so you guys that have been watching my channel regular, and if you watched my last video, you'll know that um, I've been working out of town, or working regular anyway, and that's slowed the work down on the 46, but you guys have ever built anything, even even when you're working with parts that you have most of already, it still takes money to build these vehicles, so I had to go back to work so I could uh, buy parts and stuff. But I told you guys a couple videos back that um, I had some a, a wheel choice change here, and I had several people say, well, the black wheels look best for the sleeper look or whatever. But I had these old wheels, and that's another thing. I already had them. The wheels that I put on here, the tires on them were bad. I mean, they look good, but they're dry rotted and their belts slipped and all that. And I didn't have but three of them because one of them had already slipped. The other one, the other one in the back had a big old knot on it, so they never would have run anyway. And I had got these tires from my son a few years back, and they've been sitting in the barn ever since. So they've got a kind of old age weather look, which they will clean up. And all they cost me was a set of lug nuts. So. And for 40 bucks, I got these wheels on here. And for you guys that are like myself that grew up in the late 70s, early 80s, um, I got my driver's license in 78. So if you were anybody and you had any kind of car, you had Krager SS's on it or you had Keystone Classics. And uh, I had Keystones on my 67 Camaro, but I wanted Krager's. Um, I just thought they were a lot cooler. So, this is what we're going to run on this truck for now. Because it's what we got. And it's period correct for something that was fixed up in the 70s or 80s. Which is kind of what I was going for. You know, the old truck being fixed up and stuck in a barn for 30 something years. So, that would put the, the time period to mid 80s or whatever. So, and, and basically that's when this truck got put up. That when when I took this thing out of a, out of the barn, I took it out of in uh, the end of December, beginning of January. It had been in that building since the the mid '80s, so that's kind of what we're going after. But anyhow, we we haven't done much since the last video. I uh, did some more welding on the the cab mounts. They still need some more welding. Um, I'm getting ready to mock up the, the pedal assembly here and see how I'm going to tie it into that cab mount bracket. But like I said, with me working, and I'm working some long hour days, so it's uh, pretty much putting me to a couple days on the weekend to do this, if that much. So we're going to... um. We're going to just plug along at it as we have time, and we'll keep you updated as we do work. Um, but like I said, it's going to slow down a little bit. It is springtime, so the grass is growing, and that's an extra chore. Um, I keep about five acres of grass cut here, so that takes a bit of time too, so... There's going to be less time available to work on this thing, which doesn't upset anybody as much as it does me. But, I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, uh, I got to have parts, and it takes working to get the parts. So, that's what we're doing. Um, somebody had said something in the, in the video, in, one, in the last video, one of the cab mounts on it, that I needed to... Put a longer yoke on this transmission and that's not true i need a longer drive shaft and we already discussed this this shaft is just here so i can get the drive line angles and the alignment right uh somebody told me a long time ago when it comes to a drive shaft and a slip yoke the rule of thumb is what you're looking for and what they mean is you need a thumb's distance between the rear of the transmission and the front of the yoke so that's what I usually aim for, that, that distance right there. So we're going to need about three inches more on the drive shaft. 
Um, somebody else had said something about, you know, well, why didn't I um, hunt some hunt some stock shafts and place my engine placement accordingly? Well, I didn't want to cut the cab up. It's really too nice. I mean, I could have cut the whole firewall out and moved this engine anywhere I wanted to. But I'm looking at getting the shifter position as close to stock as possible and having adequate firewall clearance and clearance for everything else. Um, which, when I mocked it up before, the, the brake pedal was hitting the back of the head. So I think I've got that squared away. It's got plenty of clearance there. So I like where it's at. It's probably going to have to come back a half an inch or more to gain me clearance for my um, water pump. But other than that, she's pretty much where she's going to be at. And whatever I got to do, like I said, I discussed in the past how critical I thought this drive shaft issue was. And I'm going to end up finding a, um, an aluminum drive shaft out of, a, out of a late model Chevrolet truck and having it shortened to the proper length. Um, one, it's going to reduce the reduce the weight and it's going to have a bigger diameter that can that can hold up to the horsepower that this this motor is going to make and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna drive this truck and i'm gonna be hard on it because that's what I'm, I'm building it to play with i mean i didn't but i didn't put a cam in it just purely for sound i mean i like the sound but that's not the only reason i did it i did it for performance i like horsepower i like spinning tires so i need something that's going to hold up to what kind of abuse I'm gonna give it, which is I'm I'm not gonna abuse it, but I'm gonna play with it. I mean that's what I'm building it to play and building it to drive. So that's that's the deal on that. But I ha do have some more parts coming. I got some bed strips coming. Um, I've got some oak that I've had put up in the uh, the barn for quite some time. Some. Uh, some white oak, so that's going to be pretty nice. Um, I've got running boards coming, and as soon as I make enough of money, I'm gonna order my fenders for the rear because I don't I don't have any rear fenders. So we'll um, get all that going, and when we do, we'll um, show you as we go. But it's really coming along nicely. I'm very pleased with the progress so far i hope you guys like my wheel choice but if you don't i'm sorry it's what i got it's what i'm gonna run um i think it's gonna look good uh but like i said we're gonna get to it as we have time and it's not gonna be you know i was posting a video about every other day and like I said the other day, it's probably going to slow down to one a week or something. But if I do more, you'll get more. And it's just, it's just whatever I have time for. And um, like I said, hadn't really done much. Uh, I put these wheels and tires on it today. And just, just thinking about how I'm going to run the daggone brake pedal assembly and stuff and so, the, some more parts I have to, I, I need a, um, a hydro boost unit and master cylinder. Uh, like I said, I got all the clutch hydraulics. So, gathering parts and working on it when I have time. But, like I said, as soon as I get this, this pedal assembly worked out, then we'll get it back in the shop, get the cab off of it, clean the frame up, get it painted, and then it's really gonna start coming together quickly. Uh, like I said, got to pull the heads off and go ahead and do them. They're, they're empty right now, so I got to do the valve job and put them heads back together. Got the flywheel clutch and all that stuff to go in there because there's nothing in, inside the bell housing right now. So, got it coming together. Um, It's gonna be cool, but you can't rush. You can't rush these things. I, I still need to to figure out the front core support mounting because this 
this is not right. But I'm gonna wait until I get my cab, my cab mounts finished up and mount this cab on the hockey pucks. So that's gonna give me an accurate height on the cab because the way I did it, I welded these mounts in and the cab is three quarters inch off the frame with the way I welded it in. The hockey pucks are seven eighths of an inch, so we're gonna gain an eighth of an inch which I need because the cab was actually sitting on the frame. So once I get that all bolted down, then I'll be able to develop, to um, figure out the front core support mounts. So y'all stay tuned. I'll show you more as I go and appreciate you watching.